Welcome to the March edition of What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. So each month we put together a selection of plants that are in bloom in that particular month. Uh, and they have to be plants that don't just bloom for a couple of days, but at least are uh, open for a good part of the month. And uh, so we're going to walk you through the plants that we've chosen for our March edition. This plant is a California native, Coreopsis gigantea, synonym Leptocyne gigantea. And it's really, uh, like the name implies, Gigantea, a very large example of a Coreopsis. Uh, it has this stout trunk, which is somewhat succulent, and then these super divided leaflets and these beautiful yellow flowers, which are just coming out now. Um, this plant goes completely dormant in the summertime. So there's just the stem and then a shock of dead leaves on the top. And that's it. And people oftentimes think it's died, but that's what it does in the summertime. And then when the rains come, boom, it comes back out, turns green, and makes this wonderful show. It's kind of a Dr. Seuss kind of a plant. Uh, really wonderful California native. Coreopsis gigantea. Salvias are members of the mint family, Lamiaceae. And California has some wonderful ones, including this one. This one is Salvia spathacea. The leaves have an uh, arrowhead shape to them and a wonderful texture to them. Uh, and the, there's uh, a, a paler underside, kind of furry. Uh, and this is a great plant for dry shade. We have an easy time figuring out plants to use in sunny places, but dry shade has less choices, and this is a very good one. And here are its beautiful flowers, rose-colored flowers that come in whorls in stages going up the flower stalk when it comes into bloom. Uh, a very nice California native plant that blooms in the wintertime and does well in dry shade, Salvia spathacea. Salvia is a big genus in the mint family, and California has some wonderful ones, including this one. This is called the San Diego sage, Salvia munzii, and it's a particular cultivar called Emerald Cascade. And you can see how the foliage cascades over in these wonderful little lilac flowers. So this plant goes quite dormant in the summertime, and uh, we actually thought it might be dying in the, in the middle of the summertime, but in the wintertime when the rains come, it leafs out and then makes this wonderful profusion of cascading foliage and these beautiful lavender flowers. Salvia munzii emerald cascade. Aloes belong to the asphodel family, and uh, this is one that comes from the eastern part of South Africa. It's called Aloe Affinis, and it has uh, leaves that are green in the middle, but quite bronzy on the outside, and uh, really a, a wonderful color. And the uh, flowers, they're not quite out yet, but they're coming, uh, and they're red when they open, or, or uh, coral red. And uh, this species is pretty variable. Some plants are more spotted than others and some more bronzy than others. Ours are particularly bronzy, aloe affinis. Aloe is a big genus in the asphodel family with lots of species in Africa and in Arabia and in Madagascar. A lot of the ones we have commonly available in cultivation in California are South African ones. And that's true of this one, aloe ferox. Uh, it has a big distribution in South Africa, mostly in the summer rainfall region, but the westernmost populations go a little bit into the winter rainfall zone as well. Uh, this one is just coming into flower, and you can see that there's kind of a bicolored uh, inflorescence. So the buds are, are a darker color, more orange, and the open flowers turn quite yellow. So that uh, two-tone effect is quite nice. Some forms of Allophyrox have that two-tone, and some do not. Uh, this one is uh, blooming a little bit on the late side for aloe ferox, and that's a good thing because a lot of our earlier ones got nipped by a freeze on January 2nd and had their flowers ruined. So this one is looking good right now, aloe ferox. Grevillea is a large Australian genus in the Protea family. Mostly shrubs, but there are some trees as well. And some of them have been around in our landscapes here in California for a long time, but this is a relative newcomer. This is Grevillea petrophylloides big bird. And we really think it's a wonderful plant because it makes these long wands that come up out of the middle of the bush and then these uh, amazing clusters of flowers that have a little bit of uh, magenta and a little bit of uh, mauve in, in them. Uh, really wonderful color combination. And the foliage of the bush is so 
fine textured. It really makes a, a nice contrast to a lot of our um, bulkier things like the agaves and the, and the cacti and so forth. Uh, it's done really well for us. Uh, Gravilia petrophylloides, big bird. Acacias are in the pea family, and Australia has a great number of them. Uh, and this one's one we don't see too often, Acacia glaucoptera. Glaucoptera means uh, milky wings or milky blue-green wings and refers to these uh, little um, projections of the stem. They're not true leaves uh, that have this milky color. But the new foliage has a bronze tinge to it. So the contrast between the blue-green and the bronze is uh, nice in itself. And then at this time of year come the flowers, little yellow puffballs that really make a wonderful addition to the whole show. And it's just beginning now. It'll have a lot of yellow flowers in a couple of weeks. Uh, hasn't been uh, grown too much in this country and uh, we're really excited by it and we think other people will be too if they try it in their gardens. Acacia glaucoptera. Here we have a bush in the Scrofulariaceae named Fralinia undulata. It's from South Africa. And most of its populations are in the winter rainfall zone on the western side of South Africa, but it extends eastward far enough that there are some populations that get their rain in the summer as well as the winter time. Uh, it's got these uh, purple or lavender purple flowers, tubular flowers with a flared mouth, and uh, really making a nice impact here in winter time. Fralinia undulata. Grevilleas are Australian members of the Protea family, and some of them have been around for a long time, and that's true of this one here, Grevillea lavangulacea panola. So lavangulacea because uh, the effect of the bush reminds somebody of a lavender, so they named it after that. Uh, some Grevilleas have their flowers in elongated clusters and some in small clusters like this one. The flowers are wonderful though. They're little curly cues in pink and cream and uh, really has an amazing number of flowers on the bush as a whole and a nice long blooming season in the wintertime. Grevillea lavangulacea panola. South Africa has more succulent plants than any other country in the world, and a big part of the reason for that high species count is the ice plant family, Isoaceae. And this is an example here. This is Oscularia colescens. So uh, Oscularia is a small genus, but related to the larger genus Lampranthus. And like many of the ice plants, its flowers tend to be closed in the morning time and don't open until the middle of the day and are on full display in the afternoon. So here we are filming this in the morning. The flowers are still kind of closed, but they're beautiful, bright magenta pink flowers, and it makes a lot of them. Uh, and uh, so this is the time of year when it blooms in the middle of the winter, and uh, it's sort of midway through its bloom now. So it's got uh, plenty of flowers on it now, but more to come and, and uh, some that are already finished. Uh, this patch probably would be fuller if there had not been a large agave growing in front of it that just finished flowering and got taken out recently. And so it's uh, just starting to fill out again in the wake of that. Uh, in the afternoon, it's just brilliant with all the flowers open and a wonderful landscaping plant here in California. Oscularia colescens. Euphorbia is a huge and very, very variable genus. Some of them are little garden weeds that we hate when they come up in our gardens, and other ones are all the way up to trees. But there's one special group from South Africa called the medusoids. Medusoids because they have a central body and then cylindrical arms that radiate out from that body like Medusa with her head of snakes. And this is the species uh, that's named after that. It's called Euphorbia caput medusae, literally Medusa's head. And it's in flower right now with these uh, interesting, well, the flowers on Euphorbia are not like those of other plants. They, they have a structure called a cyathium, which is like a cup with little glands around the outside and teeny little stripped down flowers in the middle. And in this case, the glands around the outside have little white fingers and a very uh, unique look to them. And uh, so we'll show you a close-up so you can see the, the effect that that gives. This plant comes from near Cape Town in a climate very similar to California's, and they do really well here in California. Euphorbia caput medusae. 
The genus aloe belongs to the asphodel family, asphodel aceae, and a great many of them come from South Africa. Um, of the aloes, the, the largest group of them is called the maculate aloes, and uh, South Africa has the majority of these. So maculate means spotted, and they do tend to have spotted leaves. They also have flowers that have uh, characteristic swelling right at the base of the flower, as this one does. The name Brant Dryensis means coming from Brant Dry, which is a place in South Africa, but it's kind of a there's no there there kind of place. I went there and there wasn't even a single house to be seen. Uh, but this aloe is really a wonderful aloe. It's got uh, not only uh, spots but stripes too and lots and lots of clusters of uh, coral red flowers and it, here it is doing its thing right now aloe brant dryensis. It's not surprising that we do well with aloes from the western part of South Africa where the rain falls in the winter just like we have it here in California but happily we do well with a lot of the summer rainfall ones too as long as we give them some water in the summertime when their growing season arrives. Uh, this one is Allocryptopoda from northeastern South Africa and uh, has a medium-sized rosette of uh, bluish-green leaves and these wonderful spires of flowers in the wintertime. So the buds are deep red and then they turn yellow as they open so you have this nice red and yellow effect when they're in flower. Uh, this plant, Allo uh, wickensii, is uh, is uh, pretty easy to grow for us actually and uh, it's it's wonderful that we can grow both the winter rainfall ones and the summer rainfall ones uh, whereas people in uh, summer rainfall climates do not do well with the winter rainfall ones so we kind of have the best of both worlds here. Uh, aloes are in the asphodel family, asphodelaceae. A lot of the aloes that we grow here in California come from Africa but Madagascar has some wonderful aloes too, and this is one of them. This is aloe capitata variety quartzitacola. So the uh, name capitata means having uh, head-like clusters, referring to the flowers here. And uh, the various varieties of aloe capitata are named for the rock types that they occur on. This one occurring on quartzite rocks is aloe quartzitacola. And uh, it's really a magnificent plant with these uh, blue-green leaves that get a purple tinge to them and uh, purplish-red teeth along the edge, and then these wonderful clusters of flowers. So the flowers are bright yellow when they're open, but they're orange at the bud stage. And uh, we're filming this now just before the first flowers have opened, so there's a lot of uh, yellow-orange, but not uh, any open flowers uh, just yet. Uh, but there's uh, three branches on the uh, inflorescence, so uh, this uppermost largest one is going to open first and then the other two following. Um, and it's really remarkable that an aloe from a country like Madagascar out in the Indian Ocean is tough enough to grow in our climate, but this one does, and it even endured uh, freezing temperatures on a number of occasions. Aloe capitata variety quartzitacola. The asphodel family contains lots of wonderful ornamentals like the aloes and the gasterias and the red hot pokers, but also bulbinella. So uh, this is a uh, South African genus and uh, the plants go completely dormant in the summertime, but then come out with these uh, bright green leaves when the rains come in the fall and bloom their hearts out in uh, January, February. And then uh, by the time spring comes along, they're going dormant and going to sleep again and uh, not to be seen again until the following fall. So we have used this plant as a companion plant for this erythroina here. This is erythroina bidwillii, and it grows in the summertime and goes completely dormant in the winter. So it's the opposite growing time. So in the summertime, it would be a big bush occupying this whole space. And when we cut it back, uh, back to this stub in the wintertime, that leaves a lot of uh, empty ground. So we have utilized the bulbinella to fill in that space and it flowers while the uh, erythroina isn't happening. So they make a nice pair together. Uh, but look at all the flowers. This is really a spectacular plant for the uh, wintertime. Bright yellow flowers, bulbinella nutans. Camelousium is a genus in the Myrtaceae or Myrtle family. Uh, and they come from Western Australia. 
Uh, there are other Australian representatives of the family that are much better known, like eucalyptus or the bottle brush, Callistemon. Uh, but the closest relative of Camelasium is a different genus, and that is Leptospermum. Uh, one of the species, Leptospermum scoparium, is commonly called the New Zealand tea tree, and the flowers of those are quite similar to those of Camelasium. Uh, this one is a cultivar called the MB Violet with these beautiful um, rosy pink uh, flowers that uh, fade towards white at the middle and then have a glistening center, just like a Leptospermum flower has. Uh, we really like these Camelasiums because they're fine texture, they don't cast dense shade, and they do very well for us here in California. Camelasium MB Violet. The Crassula family, Crassulaceae, is commonly called the stone crop family, and that's because so many of the plants in the family grow on rock outcrops. Uh, and one of the largest genera in the family is sedum. We have sedums in Eurasia, we have sedums actually on Mount Diablo right near here, but some of the most succulent sedums come from Mexico. And that's true of this one here. This is sedum pachyphyllum, pachyphyllum meaning thick leaf. So it has uh, jelly bean-like blue-green leaves with a little bit of red at the tip and these wonderful bright yellow flowers. Uh, it's uh, got a lot of flowers still to come, uh, makes a, a big show in the wintertime with yellow flowers, and even when it's not in flower, the leaves are so attractive that it's a wonderful statement in and of itself. Sedum pachyphyllum. Here at the Ruth Bancroft Garden, we have lots of plants in the Asphodelaceae, from the aloes and the gasterias, on uh, the bulbinellas, and also uh, bulbine. That's the genus to which this plant belongs. This is bulbine abyssinica. Abyssinica means Ethiopian, and it does occur way up in Ethiopia, but this particular plant was grown from seeds collected in South Africa, thousands of miles away from there. So obviously this uh, plant occurs in a lot of different habitats in a lot of different countries. Uh, we find it quite easy to grow, uh, and it makes a lot of flowers in the uh, winter and spring. So here it is with five flower stalks, uh, with open flowers, and then another four or five coming uh, down below. So really a good flower production. Bulbine abyssinica. Here we have an aloe called Aloe van Balenii. It comes from the northeastern part of South Africa. And there, in its home habitat, uh, it's quite dry in the wintertime. So uh, the plant really uh, turns amazingly red during the winter months. Here, where it's not so dry in the winter, uh, our plant stays green. But boy, does it flower. And you can see how many spires of flowers are coming out of that plant. This is more than it's ever had before. Uh, the color range in Van Balenii could be yellow, or it could be uh, orange, or it could be kind of a pale pinkish color. Uh, in our case, it's, it's pretty yellow. Um, and the plant starts out as a single head, but then becomes a bigger and bigger clump over time. So ours has quite a few heads on it by now. Uh, it's an amazing uh, winter flowering aloe uh, that looks Terrific with a lot of yellow flowers this time of the year, aloe van balenii. I'm quite fond of making hybrid aloes because I like to imagine what might happen if I combine this with that and then uh, actually do it and see what happens. Uh, this one here is a hybrid I did between aloe excelsa and aloe petricola. Aloe excelsa is a really large aloe from Zimbabwe with a trunk and very long prickly leaves. And uh, Aloe petricola is a more compact plant with less prickly leaves uh, from South Africa. Well, the advantage of Aloe uh, petricola is that it has a wonderful, striking red and white bicolored flower stalk. And the advantage of Excelsa is its large size and many, many branches on the inflorescence. I was hoping to get both, and here I was successful. So right now, as we're filming this segment, uh, the flowers have not opened yet. So all you see are the buds, and they're all red. But when they open, they do turn uh, creamy white, and there's a wonderful red and white thing going on. Uh, really a magnificent plant, uh, and one that I'm proud to have uh, hybridized, Aloe excelsa ex petricola. The Aeoniums are a genus in the stonecrop family, Crassulaceae, 
and the great majority of them come from the Canary Islands. The Canary Islands are off the coast of Morocco, but they are part of Spain. And one of the really wonderful Aeoniums, uh, widely grown in California, is this one, Aeonium arboreum. And so it's more stemmy than some of the other Aeoniums, uh, and it has a variety called variety atropurpureum, in other words, having purple tips, and that's because the leaves turn so purplish. So that's this one here. And like all forms of Aeonium arboreum, it has these cones of yellow flowers. And here we see them in full flower. Um, the rosette that flowers dies. So this particular head was a head here, and now it's gone into flower. And at some later point, then this head will do the same. But because there's so many heads, then the clump keeps right on going. Aeonium arboreum variety atropurpureum. That brings us to the close of the March edition of What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. But remember, there's only so many plants we have on our list every month, and a lot of other things to be seen in the garden. So come visit us and check it out for yourself. We hope to see you soon at the Ruth Bancroft Garden.